Morning, everybody. Thought I'd do a quick review of, well, not a review, just a quick uh, magazine in the house video. It's freezing down here, so if you hear anything chattering, it's probably in my teeth. Uh, I forgot to leave the uh, the heater on downstairs, and it's 27 degrees this morning. And let's just log in while we're here. It's kind of early. So anyway, we're going to open this up, have a look at it. You can see the, the packaging, although it does say, don't ban this uh, ripped. And uh, you know, it looks like it's been dinged on the corners pretty hard here. I'm hoping everything's in good shape. Uh, let's open it up and have a look. So the uh, magazine's in pretty good shape, actually. It doesn't look like it got uh, dinged up too bad, which is nice. Let's check the counters out and the map. Uh, this is for Rockets Red and Glare, I believe it's called. I'm pretty excited about seeing uh, this title. I haven't got many uh, games in this theme. Now, just the corner of the magazine uh, counters are kind of bent down. That's not going to cause any damage or any problems, so that's great. Makes me happy. And I need to go make coffee for my wife, so I'm going to open all this up and go through the magazine over coffee, and then I'll perhaps have uh, slightly more informed comments for you when we, uh, when we come back. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, we're back. I finally found a corner of the house that I can have access to by myself. Uh, so pardon the background noise from the heater. As I mentioned, it's uh, quite cool here this morning. Now that we're kind of uh, still at, uh, we're about 10 a.m. and it's still under 30 degrees. And I have five children here. I have friends visiting and there are Xboxes running and Pandora streaming Christmas music and we're trying to get a tree up because we're running late this year and it's all crazy, crazy, crazy. Lots of visitors here. So I found a little corner of my house to hide in and I'm going to try and record my impressions of the Paper Wars uh, magazine. I'm not going to talk about the game Rod, uh, Rockets Red Glare specifically. Uh, we will get into it uh, and discuss the War of 1812 and it's uh, comparable titles at some point. I'll try and play this early in the new year if I can, and we'll see how we go. And I also received uh, the Line of Fire uh, 14 magazine, which is just right there in that package. And we'll have a discussion about that and a look at the counters and all that sort of good stuff in a little while in a separate video. So this magazine uh, is Interesting, this uh, edition, as it uh, goes through and uh, covers some pretty cool titles. And my first impression was, as I started looking at the magazine, is that, that most of the reviews were going to be puff pieces. Uh, although they were very long, they were going to be puff pieces about how everything was fabulous. Fortunately, that ended up not being the case, and there's some good, fair, critical review of, of games. And uh, so I've, I've enjoyed a quick skim of all of the articles here. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, John, uh, John Burt talks about how uh, his uh, gaming and uh, ability to cover magazine, uh, magazines, uh, cover games has uh, become somewhat more limited with the new ownership or joint venture uh, with Compass. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, it's good to read his comments. And he makes a point that uh, I think might be interesting for us to discuss at some point in the future about the volume of games that are coming out and the types of games that are coming out. I, I certainly think that there are, and we'll talk about this in detail at some point, but I think there's uh, some new categories of games that we need to start looking at as historical war gamers. Are we looking at traditional hex encounter games? Are we looking at you know, strictly card-driven games. Are we looking at introductory wargaming and historical wargaming? Uh, or are there other, and there are other categories as well, I think, that, and which, some of which are in here, that are more than access and allies, but less than a historical wargame, and are presenting a relatively historically accurate view of a particular scenario. And I think Schutz uh, Games is a title here that uh, is a new company. No, it's not a new company, but it's been, it's been around for a little while. They are now starting to certainly uh, become uh, 
higher on my radar as they produce more games or perhaps I'm exposed to them more on Facebook and I'm seeing uh, the, the effort and the love that's going into their titles is particularly uh, impressive. So my understanding is this is an Australian chap as well that's producing these games. Uh, this review was done by uh, Kevin Reed. I don't know Kevin personally, but uh, he writes quite well. And he goes into extensive detail about how or how he plays the game or how the game mechanics work. I, I like that, but after a certain point, I, I don't want to hear the whole, the whole story. I really want to get a sense for the mechanics, you know, and then I would like to understand your opinions on it. Uh, but, and perhaps with some reference points as to why you think certain things are a certain way as compared to other games. Now this particular title is uh, focused on a, a, a battle which is not well covered in wargaming. So I'm going to give that to him uh, and to the designer. And I think that uh, the, the net review here is that this is a good game. There are a couple little nitpicks. Uh, but uh, nothing that's a game breaker by any chance and certainly that the game play and the replayability is here to a certain extent but it's more an exploration of the uh, of the of the particular event as opposed to a game that was designed to be played you know, perhaps 10 or 12 times so nice review there uh, Shenandoah uh, you know, Doug did a good job of uh, writing this article, and as you read it, you will go, oh, okay, it's a Columbia Games block game, and we're using a handful of dice and ABC for combat, and we're using some, some rules to uh, mandate or uh, create the historical track, and we're providing some alternatives to that with some optional rules. And there's your review. Amateurs to Arms, I was so impressed with this review by uh, Joseph G uh, Godbo, or uh, yeah, I think you would say Godbo, that I, I might actually have a look at this. I was dissuaded from getting involved with this particular game uh, by a, a buddy of mine who did not like the game at all. Uh, he was uh, very frustrated with the map. Uh, and then he saw one of the blow-ups of the maps and that made him a little less frustrated. Uh, he did not like the shipping uh, game, part of the game, and really made me feel like this was perhaps not a game that I would be interested in. Having read this review, which is very detailed and gives you a sense of the, some of the things you need to consider as you play, I, I uh, am perhaps uh, have had my mind changed on this particular article and as you can see it's a fairly extensive article so and then uh, then makes the claim this is a big call the best CDG on the market that's a call uh, um, remains to be seen right particularly for, for myself uh, I hope that it is uh, let's see what happens and if I get a chance to play it I'll let you know. This is where I start to relax a little bit because uh, Richard, now I don't know the different perspectives that people take on games and where these various reviewers are coming from in terms of their game history, their writing or anything else, but uh, this guy does a great job of giving you an overview of the game and the components and the mechanics and then he really goes to town on the pointlessness of this particular game and the the complete lack of uh, excitement that is around this campaign. So Vance Boris has produced a title here that uh, seems like a 85% lift of a rule set from an L2 game and produced something that has uh, very little interactive fun and is uh, limited in its uh, replay value and certainly limited in the decision choices and matrices that you may have opportunity to have decisions on. Uh, the victory point uh, track is uh, completely pointless in terms of uh, the roles that you need to make and, the, and how you can use victory points to influence combat because the French uh, can't really do a whole lot. 
due to the units. So he really does go to town on this and give it a hard, uh, give it a hard run. And I, and, I, and I appreciate that. I appreciate someone being honest about their experiences with, uh, with the game. Uh, Terry uh, writes about Bomber Command, and uh, there you go. You know, big complex game. Really doesn't have a lot uh, to say that is negative, but I came away thinking that it was uh, more game than perhaps he was interested in, or less interesting than he had hoped. So not necessarily high review for uh, for that game. Uh, nice detailed review here by these two brother of these guys who I assume are brothers or relatives in some way, shape, or form. And uh, they go through in detail and talk about Blood and Sand and the African campaign that it's uh, related to and do a fine job of getting through everything here. So uh, they give a very positive review of the game and they're in fact looking forward to playing it again. Uh, as I said, we're not going to talk about Rocket's Red Glare, so we'll skip through. Now there's a fairly extensive number of uh, pages of rules here. One, two, three, four, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. 13 pages of rules, let's call it 11 pages of rules, and there you have it. There's a air conditioner has gone off in the background and there's charts and tables, and we'll show you counters and things a little bit later on. Some commercials. Meat Grind review by Patrick Collins. I've got friends who've played this game and enjoyed it. They don't necessarily know whether it's a, uh, a game they'll play a whole bunch, but it sounds like this would be a great uh, solo game as well. So good review here on this particular title. Uh, Henry uh, Lowood does a great job of setting the scene for Nuclear Winter 68 and really tries to capture the theme and the uh, you know, somewhat unique approach to this alt history World War II set in 1968 uh, post-apocalypse game. So great review on this, walks you through what he finds to be interesting and innovative, and it comes away very impressed with the game, very impressed with the uh, narrative and the theme, very impressed with the mechanics of the game. So uh, I have not played this game. I have a feeling that it's uh, quite similar to some other titles from Lock and Load, but with a, with a fresh theme and a fresh approach and some interesting uh, add-ons and rules variations that give it uh, some more punch than perhaps some of the other titles. So, good stuff. Now, this is a game that in, in here that I think is one of those potentially crossover titles. This is a, uh, Lou Coney does this review and Lou, uh, you know, has a rep reputation that precedes him. Uh, he took the time to uh, play this game and review it. Uh, it uh, has plastic counters and cards, uh, uh, gives a nice breakdown of where he thinks the uh, game value is and the play is and comes away very, very impressed with the, with the title. And this is a tough, uh, a tough topic to cover given the lopsided nature of the particular uh, uh, scenario in Norway. So hats off to the designers uh, for pulling that one off. It, I have a feel for it that is a, a pretty straightforward, slightly more complex than Axis and Allies with a lot more historical theme, clearly, and uh, and it can be can become more involved with the advanced rules. So there you go. Now, Malta Besieged, uh, you know, VPG game. Uh, Paul has written a lot of reviews uh, and has a great sense for uh, the war game and uh, what works and what doesn't. He's a designer himself. Uh, comes away from this title uh, saying, yes, this is a good game but it kind of lacks in the historical accuracy or the historical uh, uh, impact uh, from this particular, for this particular title. But uh, likes the uh, States Besieged titles in general, States of Siege series in general, finds this to be a more meatier version of their title, their series. All right, so there's that. Uh, no question of surrender, Dave Nichols, uh, you know, has the same opinion as I do of this particular title. If you want to spend $70 to find out how to play uh, the GTS system, then that's a great title to purchase, but it is not the most engaging uh, title for the GTS system. And it is particularly, uh, uh, 
wouldn't say it's particularly. I would say that it's not necessarily the most exciting or well-balanced uh, game to play if you're looking to uh, get into this system. Now, it's your only choice as a small one mapper, or actually three quarter of a mapper uh, game. You don't really have other, any other choices because the other two titles have several maps. Uh, in fact, they probably have two or three too many maps in each uh, each title. But uh, there's a lot of dead space in Devil's Cauldron and uh, Where Eagles Dare. There are, there are maps that are never used and units that never move. So I think they're big for bigness sake. But a great system. I've only play, I've played this title once on Vassal with a friend, with Dave, uh, from Advanced After Combat, and he gave me a run-through of how the system works. And I think it's a great little system. I'm just not interested in this. I've had this title in my house for nearly a year on loan from a friend and have not had the gumption to get back to it after that vassal session. I think that says something about the title. Uh, I have not finished reading this article yet. Uh, there's, there's potentially some issues with this game based on the review. Uh, it's a literally, I think it's company level uh, combat with 10 pages of rules. It seems like it mostly works, but there are, there are um, elements of it that uh, caused concern for Napoleonic buffs. Uh, we all know that Napoleonic fans can, especially the, the Labatt folks, can be particularly snobby about their rules. But 60 pages versus 10 pages, you're going to make, you're going to have to make some sacrifices somewhere. So who knows? I, this is uh, got my attention. I might have a look at this. I like the the uh, the um, Napoleonic Brigade series. Uh, I think that's a great series. Those rules are really good, particularly the, the current version. Anyway, just a side point. Extra scenarios for Anzio Operation Shingle, one of my top 10 games played of the year. Love this game. Excited to see new, new scenarios, so that's pretty cool. All right, that's a quick look. Whoops, that's a quick look at the game. Uh, the game at the magazine, Paper Wars. Here, at issue number 78. Here's your counters for the. Uh, the game, here's your map. We'll just have a, I don't know if we need to have a quick, too much of a look. Lots of tables, little map. We all know the terrain for this. It's now got some competition. Uh, there's been a number of titles released on this. It's a fairly plain map in terms of its graphical content. But hey, it is what it is. And we'll see if that plays well. That's the point, right? Okay, that's a wrap on uh, Paper Wars 78. I hope you enjoyed the quick overview on that. It's, uh, I would say this is a well worth having a look at. It'll be uh, definitely worth it if this game plays well. All right.